Hello, how are you doing? It's another pleasure being here with you. And uh, today I'd like to speak about another very important message, which is, is grace an excuse to sin? You see, so many people are saying, you know, we live under grace. The grace of God is very good. The grace of God is sufficient. We always say that God has given us grace, that uh, we are no longer... Uh, we are no longer under the law. We are not under the law, but we are under the grace. But now, is uh, the grace of God an excuse to sin? Should we be sinning? Should we be doing wrong things? Because we know we are living under grace. And the Bible tells us in Titus 2, 11 to 15, this would be our starting point. <clears throat> For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. So we are told by the Bible that you should let no one despise you for always standing for the truth. And this is something that Apostle Paul told us with a lot of power and might. And he told us, hey, these things I want you to exhort and rebuke with all authority. So as we see, grace teaches us to live a godly life, to deny worldly lusts. To deny all the wrong things that are in the world because yes we are living under grace but we should always avoid these three main sins which is the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and also the pride of life so when we avoid this we know we are fulfilling god's word of going under grace you see grace with grace yes you can sin but should you sin no the Bible tells us no. Being saved does not mean you sin because you know you can't lose your salvation. And uh, just because you can, it doesn't really mean you should. Just because you know I can do this and go scot-free, it doesn't mean that I should. It means that I know I'm living under the grace of God and God has given me a chance to be able to prove to him how much I love him and how much I care and how much I want to show others about how good, uh, how good God has been to me. So what is grace? A good definition of grace is uh, grace is, is a God giving you what you don't deserve. God is giving you what you don't deserve. So what is this that you don't deserve? You don't deserve eternal life. Because you're a sinner. You don't deserve uh, forgiveness of sins. You don't deserve to have the Christ's imputed righteousness. You don't deserve to be called an adopted child of God. You don't deserve to be called a new creature. You don't deserve to have Christ in you and also you in Christ. There's so much that we get out of God. God giving us grace to achieve all these things. It is really, really important to understand that God has given us grace for a purpose and he wants us to use it for good, not for bad. So grace is also uh, God not giving us what we deserve. What do we deserve? As sinners, we know we deserve going to hell. We deserve uh, burning. We deserve death. But God tells us, hey, I'm going to give you everlasting life. I'm going to give you eternal life. It doesn't matter what you've done. As long as you've believed in the grace you have believed in Jesus Christ and you have received grace, then I'm going to give you something different. We all deserve to die, but God has mercy on us. That's why we need to, uh, to be thankful to God by doing good unto him. And uh, the Bible tells us very well that we are saved by his grace, not anything we do. This, there's a very famous verse, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Ephesians 8. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it tells us all the time that for by grace you are saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. There are so many people who boast and say, I know I've been saved because I've done this or I've done that or maybe I've been baptized or maybe I've 
I've been able to give more tithe offering in the church and I think I'm going to heaven because of that. No, we are told that we are saved by grace. God has given us his grace and he has told us this I'm giving you not because you deserve it, but because I'm only merciful to you. All right. Um, Once we get saved, of course, not by works, we are expected to do good works unto God. So let's see. After this, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, in verse 10, we see something here. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So God says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, all right? His workmanship to do good works. So we have to do good works. We have to have good works. This is in the verse 10, all right? Verse 10 tells us, all right, that we have to do good works. We have to show Christ, hey, you died for my sins. You did this for me. And now I'm going to prove to you how much that I love you and how much by doing good works. Good works is showing other people example of how a Christian should be like. And of course, through your testimony, testimony. Through your testimony, you can be able to reach other people. Many other people can be able to say, if that is how a Christian looks like, then I want that Christ. Living, showing the testimony, okay? So, working for God shows we want to serve him for not having gotten, uh, for having gotten his grace and not having gotten the, the wrath of God. Because with grace of God, there is no wrath, there is no condemnation, there is nothing. We are saved to serve, not to sin. So sinning is literally despising God. If you want to despise God, then go ahead, do your sins. Continue doing the wrong things that you used to do. Yes, you will not lose your salvation, but then you're despising God. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews, Hebrews, sorry, sorry, sorry. In Hebrews uh, 10, 29, the Bible tells us something here. Mm, Sorry for my mic. The Bible tells us, of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the Spirit of grace. So the Bible tells us how much sore punishment will you have for those people who had trod or who step on the blood of Christ. You see, Jesus Christ died for our sins. We understand very well. Everybody knows what happened. Jesus Christ died for our sins. He shed his own blood. And this blood is very precious. Just imagine somebody who has never done any wrong. And he used his own blood. He died for you. He shed his own blood. And then you, you're seated down there and you're saying, I will do whatever I want. I don't care about this blood. The Bible says, how much sore a punishment will it be? All right? So when you go and enjoy sin, God will judge you sometime. You see, the Bible tells us that judgment will start from the church. The judgment will start from the church. At the judgment seat of Christ. All right? So you will be judged by God. He will ask you, I saved you. I gave you grace. I gave you everything. But why were you despising me? Why are you despising the blood? Why, why were you doing all these things which are not, uh, was not supposed to be done? Let's see, Hebrews 10.30. The Bible says, <coughs> For we know him that has said, Vengeance belong unto me. I will recompense, says the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. We are his people. So God is going to judge us. Very, very soon, his judgment is coming. He's going to judge us. And verse 31 says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. I believe it's really fearful to find yourself falling in the hands of a just and righteous God. Having despised his blood, having despised what he has done for you, having despised his grace, and then you say, I will do whatever I will do or whatever I'll want. Yes, you will not lose your salvation. But remember, at the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to answer everything, every little deed that you did. That, that you did. When you are saved, we are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us once you're saved, you're washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. So your soul and spirit is saved and you become a new creature. 
So the Bible says your soul, your soul and your spirit, these two become a new creature. All right? This is what God is interested with. The body, according to God, is dead. All right? When he looks at your body, he doesn't see it. He only sees a dead thing moving. All right? But your soul and your spirit is what God saves. And this becomes the new creature. So if it's the new creature, this is what God is interested with. Right now, if you're not saved, everything that you do in your body is charged to your soul. And one day, one time, you're going to pay for that. All right? But when you get saved, this one, the soul and the spirit becomes purchased. This is a purchased possession. All right? Possession. This is a purchased possession. So God purchases you with his own blood. He purchases you and he gives you that. And the body, according to God, it is a sinful body. During the day of redemption, this one is going to be changed to become a glorified body. All right? So now he's interested with this. Okay? So it's very, very important to understand because God himself, he says that he, he, he does... He gives us a spiritual circumcision. He cuts off this from this. So he circumcises you here. In the book of Colossians, Colossians uh, 2, 11, it tells us that we are circumcised by circumcision, which is not made of hands, but spiritual circumcision. God cuts off the soul and the spirit and the body, all right? He cuts off, and then he says, this one is mine, the purchase possession. The body, after you die, it goes to the grave. But this one goes up to heaven, all right? So when you're saved, you can't sin. But it is not an excuse to let the flesh sin. You should crucify it. The Bible says, crucify your flesh, all right? Crucifying your flesh is something that God wants you to do. In 1 John 3, 9, the Bible says, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. His seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So when you're saved, you can't sin. This one can't sin. All right? This one has the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in here. Holy Spirit is in here. But this body can sin. The body can sin, can do bad things, can do this and that. But this one cannot sin. The new man cannot sin. Ephesians 4.30, the Bible says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. The Bible tells us very well, don't grieve this Holy Spirit who is inside you, inside this new creature, this new man. Don't grieve him. On whom you are sealed, you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise up to the day of redemption. The day of redemption is the day that you are redeemed of your sinful body. This body is changed at the day of redemption and you are given a glorified body. So don't grieve this Holy Spirit. And only a, only a Christian, only a person who is saved will be able to feel the grief. All right? Have you ever seen people who... Maybe they go doing wrong things, they go drinking, they go, you know, mocking people, doing wrong things, lying, stealing, and all those kind of things. And they don't feel any remorse. It's because the Holy Spirit is not inside them. But the moment you have, uh, I always say, a true Christian, a believer, cannot enjoy sin. Yes, you can go and do whatever you want to do, but you will not enjoy it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is inside you and is grieving. Anytime you do something wrong and you say, oh... Why did I do that? that? It pains me. I feel bad. I feel it's the Holy Spirit who is grieving. And the Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit who is sealed inside you up to the day of redemption. So when you trust the gospel, you're saved. And when you do bad things, the Holy Spirit inside you grieves, like I've told you. So the Bible says, please walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. You see, the body... The five senses, the body is literally the five senses. You touch, smell, taste, I mean, all, all, all those kind of five senses, you know them. So those five senses are the ones which uh, give you the, the different warnings of the body. Hey, I want this, I want to do that, I'm seeing this, I'm hearing that, this is nice to me. This one. Those are the senses, that is the body. But the Bible tells us don't walk in the flesh, 
Walk in the spirit. Listen to God. What is God telling you? What is God telling you? He wants you to do something different. Don't do what the flesh wants. Do what the spirit of God wants. Uh, the Bible says that God gives us liberty, but we should use it for the glory of God. He has given us liberty. We are no longer in bondage. The Spirit of God is not, the Holy Spirit did not come to give us bondage. We are not bound by anything. No, we can do whatever we want, but should we do that? So God gives us liberty, but should we, uh, should we use it for any other thing? No. He wants us to use for his own glory. 2 Corinthians 3.17, the Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. So what does God say about liberty? What does he explain about liberty? Liberty. All right. What does God say about Liberty. In Galatians 5.1, the Bible says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. We are free. With liberty, we are free. All right? We are free. We are not in bondage again. In whereby we are free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So, don't be entangled with the yoke of bondage. But now, listen to this. Let's go to verse 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only, all right, only not use, uh, only use not liberty for an occasion for the flesh, but by love serve one another. We are told, you have been called to liberty. But then you, you are free. You, you have liberty. But then don't use this to sin. All right? The Bible says don't use this liberty to sin, to continue doing wrong things. But use this liberty to serve one another. To tell somebody, my brother, I know this one has happened. It has happened to you. Don't worry. Pray to God. Next time try and do what is right. Don't uh, go to the things of the flesh. Try and as much as you can to... You see... Let me tell you something. The main reason why uh, somebody, after he's gotten saved, the devil is still chasing him with temptations left, right, and center is because of one thing. Satan knows that if I condemn you enough, if I make you feel so bad within inside uh, yourself, you'll not be able to go and preach to somebody else. You'll be saying, ah, I'm very dirty very bad, I've done this and that. So when you meet another person who is a sinner, who is an unbeliever, you can't tell them, hey, Jesus saves, Jesus loves you, this and this. You'll keep on thinking, oh, I'm so con." Now imagine in a village where we have about 10,000 people and 1,000 people are Christians. And out of those 1,000 people, we have 500 people already who are feeling condemned, who are feeling bad about themselves. They can't tell and reach other people and tell them the gospel. So who is going to preach? That is what the devil wants. He wants to condemn you and condemn you and condemn you. Because, let me tell you, we're living in the world. You may be walking, something happens, and then you discover, I've just messed up. You discover, I've done this, I've done this. No, the Bible tells us, a righteous man falls seven times, but he still wakes up. You fall, you wake up. You fall, you wake up. You see, God has called us into liberty. But let's use that liberty to edify one another, to serve one another. So if you do what's wrong knowingly, you're a carnal Christian. A carnal Christian is someone who does things the way he wants. You know, you're just doing things. You don't care what the Holy Spirit is saying inside you. No, don't be a carnal Christian. That is not good. So... You may ask, what is the grace of God for? Why do you have the grace of God? Why is God giving us grace instead of giving us something else and telling us, you know, you have been saved, but then now live this way. Now he's given us grace. Why? Why has he given us grace? First Peter 2, 15 to 16. The Bible says, For so the will of God, that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. 16, as free and not using your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. All right. So the Bible tells us you have been free, but not to make it, uh, not to use your liberty as a cloak of maliciousness, but be the servants of God. This one is 
thinking all the time, you know, I have liberty. I can do whatever I want. I can be this and that. The Bible tells us we should always have a testimony. A testimony. Make sure you have a testimony. Whoever sees you, sees Christ. All right? Sees, if this is what we call salvation, I want to get one. If this is what we call godly people, I want to be a godly person. If this is what a person can do, if he's saved, then I really want to get saved. That is what God wants us to do. He wants us to show testimony. He, does, he doesn't want us to uh, use our, our, our liberty as a clock of maliciousness, all right? Just because you're free, don't use that freedom for evil, all right? So if you get saved, then you go sinning. Your, your latter state always gets worse than the first. The Bible tells us your latter state will even be, if you're a drunkard, before you got saved. And then after you get saved, you say, now uh, I think I have the liberty. Now I can even, you know, do it much more. Your latter state will end up being worse than the first state. How? The Bible tells us here in 2 Peter 2.18. 2 Peter 2.18 to 20. The Bible says, For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. Through uh, Though much wantonness, wantonness is wants, you want so much, you want, you want, you want. Those, are, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought into bondage. Verse 20, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So if you are a drunkard and you say, now I want to know the gospel and you are saved and you continue in your drinking, now you say, ah, now I have grace, now I am in liberty, I can do whatever I want. It is more possible that your latter state will be far far much bad than how you were before why because satan wants to make sure that he he grips in you so that he can finish you the bible says the wages of sin is death you continue doing it you god will leave you to a reprobate mind he will say okay fine you've done it so much i've told the holy spirit is always trying to guide you no stop 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 and then you say ah the salvation of god is free now i'm on liberty i can do whatever i want you will end up being more sinful and more sinful and more sinful, drunkard more, and who knows, you might end up dying. God is not going to take the bullets for you. He's not going to, uh, you know, when you get liver cancer and then uh, now you start praying, oh God, help me. Yes, he can help you, but that is not, that's not grace. That is not grace. At the end of the day, Satan wants you dead so that you cannot preach to any other person to tell them about the good news of Jesus Christ. And also, you'll be losing your rewards in heaven because we are told that we'll be rewarded, all right? So you lose all that. So do not change the grace of God to lasciviousness. That is lustful thoughts like some people do. Don't do that. It is very, very bad to do such kind of a thing. Uh, let's see. Jude 3, 4, the Bible says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Okay? For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God, our Lord Jesus Christ. These are the kinds of people. You see them in churches. What they do is that I can do whatever I want. I've seen even uh, people, even leaders in the church, they are doing wrong things. They are doing intentional wrong things because they know I am under the grace. Now, that is not what God intended it to be. He intended it to be you to be a testimony to the world. And that you can, everything that you do, you're gathering yourself as many and many and many uh, rewards up in heaven. The Bible says, don't invest your things down here. Invest things, your things in heaven above. Because that's where uh, mold and rust cannot uh, even, even get hold of. But many people just want... Um, 
I can steal from people, I can steal from church members and tell them, hey, give me this, do that, you know, and I can use the money for evil because I know I'm under the grace. Is that what the Bible says? No. The Bible says don't do that. It is bad. It is not acceptable. All right? First Peter, uh, in First Peter 4, 1 Peter 4.1, the Bible speaks literally about why we need to get ready to suffer for Christ's sake. Many people don't want to suffer. They don't want to uh, suffer for Christ's sake. But you are told here on earth, you're going to have trouble time. You're going to have a very hard time. But then, be firm because Jesus already overcame. And we are told, Jesus says that if he was persecuted, then you're going to be persecuted as well. So don't wait and don't think that, hey, my life is going to be so nice. And those people will give you the prosperity gospel. That is my best life now, your best life now. You know, you, you, can, you can be the best now. Now, those now, now kind of thing, that to me sounds like the spirit of Esau. Esau. You remember Esau, he only said, ah, just give me a plate of soup. I don't worry about what is going to come. I don't worry about the big things. Just give me soup now. They want to push you towards that soup and you forget that there's something bigger coming. First Peter 4, 1 Peter 4.1 For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. You can suffer and the same time that you're suffering, you're enjoying. No. How can you suffer when you're enjoying? No, you can't. You can't enjoy sin when you're suffering. He that, uh, that he should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the last of men, but to the will of God. The Bible tells us don't, don't spend all your time in the last of, last of men, but to the will of God. Do the will of God. Do what God wants you. To do and the moment you're suffering suffering does not mean you going there and maybe you're, you're hurting yourself no suffering means you see other people are having parties there they're doing some things which are they are really enjoying and you're saying for the sake of god's testimony i'm not going to mix in that party i know it's evil those things which they are doing are evil or you see some other people drinking others fornicating others doing uh, things and they tell you hey we're enjoying it but then you say i rather suffer for the sake of the testimony of Christ. You're going to get a reward in heaven. God is going to give you a reward in heaven. So you have to brace yourself for that. You have to understand that. You have to understand that. So suffering is all about crucifying the desires of the flesh. When you crucify all the desires of the flesh. And you suffer for the sake of Christ. Then God tells you that in heaven you're going to get a reward. So let's avoid the things that we did before we got saved. That's what the Bible tells us. Let's avoid the things that we did before we got saved. First Peter 4, 3 to 5, the Bible says, For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles, when we walked in lasciviousness, lusts, and excess of wine, ravelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, wherein they think is strange <laughs> that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? The Bible tells us, people of the world will, will wonder, is this, is this, why is this person not running with us to the riots, to doing wrong, evil things? It's because you have a testimony. Many people will laugh at you. They will laugh at you and they will be saying, this person is fake. He doesn't go... He doesn't go to do all the evil things that we enjoy. He doesn't lie. He is not corrupt. He's not. You, you see, the world will hate those people who are not of this world. And the Bible tells us, you are not of this world. So people are going to hate you. People are going not to love you because you're not of this world. You don't behave like the people of this world. They're going to ask you, why can't you just be corrupt like all of us at your workplace? Why, why can't you get the money and just organize that uh, tender, that business for these other people? And they'll wonder, why are you not doing these things? And they'll laugh at you and they'll joke all the time uh, against you and saying, this person, look at this person, is fake. And you will suffer because of what? The gospel. But the Bible tells us not to sin. Do not sin. Even Apostle Paul himself, he has told us so many times that we should not sin. Let's just go to the book of Romans and we see the whole 
uh, chapter 6, what he talks about, it really, if, if you want to know about the whole issue, about the whole gospel of grace, just go to Romans 6. Just go through it. And I want us to go through it together. And then we can see how much grace God has given us and how much we are in liberty. But then we should not use the liberty for evil. Let's, let's hear. Chapter 6, verse 1 of Romans. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That is Paul saying, should we continue in sin because now uh, we have grace that it may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? We are already dead to sin. We are dead to sin. Like I told you, we are dead. The body is dead. It's cut off now. This one, this new man cannot sin. We are dead to sin. All right? How shall we then that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized unto his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, so even so we also should walk in newness of life. If you're claiming that you've, you're dead with Christ, you say, I died with Christ. Then why are you walking with sin? You're already dead. Your, your, your sinful body has been cut off. And then now you have the new creature inside you. Why are you still walking in sin? All right? Why are you still walking in sin? Uh -huh. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. We die together and then we shall resurrect uh, the same way. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Don't serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. So if you're freed from sin, then why are you serving sin? You're already freed from poverty. Why are you still going to sin? It's, it's like, uh, have you ever seen these people who... They win a lottery. Maybe somebody was poor. He was just from the ghetto. He wins a lottery and then he starts living. Uh, he buys a good house, buys a good car. He does everything. But then he still <laughs> feels, no, I am what, not worth of living this life. I have my old life that I used to enjoy in the ghetto. I have to go and live there. But then you have this grace, this liberty, but then you're still going to live in that old dirty place in, in the ghetto in and you're asking yourself, why then, even God is wondering, why then did I give you this if you still who want to go back to the old ways? You see, let's not serve sin. Let's not do the old things because we already know that we are dead from sin. Verse 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death has no more dominion over him. For he that... He died, he died unto sin once. But he that liveth, he lived unto God. Likewise, reckon all yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let no sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the last thereof. Don't obey sin. The Bible says, please stop obeying sin. Stop doing, get that example that I've given you. You won a lottery. You're already from the ghetto. You're already now living in the uplands, the uptowns. But then you still want to go back to the ghetto, go back doing the old dirty things that you used to do, but you've already won the lottery. Then why did you even win it in the first place? All right? So stop serving sin. Start serving uh, things of God. Verse 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not, not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Yes, you are not under the law, you are under the grace. Sin cannot have dominion over you. We saw very well that the Bible says uh, uh, those people who are saved, they cannot sin. You can't sin because you have the Holy Spirit inside you. But the body can sin. Your flesh can sin. But your new man can't sin. All right? Verse 15. What, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under the grace? Should we sin now since we know you can't sin? Should we sin because we know we are not under the law but under the grace? God forbid. Verse 16. 
Know ye not that whom you yield your servants to obey, his servants are ye to whom you obey. All right? So whoever you will uh, yield yourself to. If you feed, if you f- whatever you feed inside you, there's somebody used to say that inside us is like the way you, uh, you see uh, uh, you, you have a dog and a wolf. So if you continue feeding the wolf, at, the, at your backyard and don't feed your dog, then one day the wolf will be more stronger and then it will eat your dog. But if you don't feed your, the wolf all, always outside of your backyard and you feed your dog more, your dog is going to protect you against the wolf. So whoever you want to feed, if you want to feed sin, it's all up to you. If you want to feed what is righteous, it's all up to you as well. God is going to bless you for doing what is right. All right? Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Verse 17. But God be thanked that you are the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which you, uh, was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the man of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For you have yielded your member servants unto uncleanness, unto iniquity, unto iniquity. Even now... Yield your member servants to righteousness and to holiness. Just the same way you are yielding yourself, doing wrong things. All the time you are enjoying sin. Now yield your members into doing good things. When you see good things, you want to do it. If you see something which is right, you want to do it. Forget about the way you used to enjoy sin. Now start enjoying righteousness. Okay? That's what the Bible says. Verse 20. For when you are servants of sin, you are free from righteousness. When you served sin, you are free from righteousness. Okay. What fruit had what fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? <laughs> Look at the things that you really got ashamed. You drank and then you fell on the uh, you, you 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 fell along the way and people are laughing at you in the morning and then you're there you know looking all dirty and wet and everything and uh, you did wrong things. People are always saying, "Look at this mad person." You gained nothing. You only ashamed yourself. But now you have grace of God. You have righteousness. So yield yourself towards righteousness. Okay? For the end of those things is death. The end of those things that you used to do was death. But now I'm being made from uh, being made free from sin and become servants of God. Uh, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see, Apostle Paul tells us very well, back then you used to enjoy sin. There was no reward for anything. But now, you in righteousness, enjoy righteous things and you will get a reward. God is going to reward you for the good things that you do. All right? I think that one has, uh, you've been able to understand that part. So, when you're in the flesh, you cannot please God. It is very impossible to please God when you're doing things on the flesh. When you're doing things following the flesh. Now, this one I'm talking to born-again Christians, people who are saved. When you're following your flesh, you're not following the Spirit, then you can't please God. The Bible sa- says in uh, Romans 8, 6, Romans 8, 6 from... Uh, uh, eight six to eight. Huh? Let's start from verse six. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You can't have peace unless you're doing what is right, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. All right. If you live in the flesh, all right. Flesh, you can't please God. All right? So when you're living in the flesh, you can't please God. You have to live in the new man, this one. You walk in the spirit, and then you can please God. All right? So you have to sacrifice your body to God. Romans 12, 1 to 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Why is Jesus saying this is your reasonable service? It's the only thing that you can, you see, is the only reasonable thing. I, I'm not telling you to come and die for your sins, no. The only reasonable thing that I want you to do, reasonable, 
Mm-hmm. Reasonable service that I want you to do is very simple. Just do what is right. Follow what is right. I've given you grace. And verse 2 says, And be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So he's saying, renew your mind. You used to think this way. Change the way you think. Renew your mind and start thinking other things. Start thinking as the Lord wants you to think. Stop thinking in the old ways. Renew your mind. All right? So also the Bible tells us very well, please, if you're already under grace, if you're under grace, do not love pleasing yourself. You see, so many people say, it's all about me, it's all about me, I don't care as long as I'm happy, as long as I'm happy. That spirit of I, 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 I want to be okay, I know myself, I enjoy myself. That is, that is the spirit which started with Satan, Lucifer, in, back in heaven. He said, I want to ascend high up. I want to be like the most high. I want to be better. I want I, I, I. You see, when you put on that spirit of I want to please myself, I want to be happy, I want to do this and that. Remember, even Jesus himself did not die for himself. He died for you. He did not please himself. He wanted to please God and to do what is right for the sake of someone else. All right? Romans 15, 1 through uh, 3, it says, When then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves, let everyone of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but it is it's written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. He says, I did not even please myself. I was, I was trying to do it for the sake of others. I died for the sake of others. It was not about me. Just imagine Christ at the cross, naked, there, having done no sin. Was he pleasing himself or was he doing it for someone else? Should a Christian sin? Should a Christian sin? I know I've spoken that, but let me insist it even more. In 1 Corinthians 15, 34, the Bible says, Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Paul is saying, you should awake to righteousness. Do not sin. There are so many places where it is said, do not sin. Don't sin. Don't sin. All right? Ephesians 4.26, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. The Bible tells us, don't be, you can be angry. Yeah, we all get angry. But do not sin when you're angry. And let not the sun go down upon your wrath. First John 2.1, my little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Ephesians 5.1-4, Ephesians 5.1-4, let's... Actually, let's go through this in depth. All right. Ephesians uh, uh, 5, 1 through 4. Be ye their followers. Uh, Ephesians 5, 1 through 4. Be ye followers, therefore followers of God, as dear children. And walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us, an offering, a sacrifice to God for a sweat-smelling server. But fornication and all the uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming the saints. All right? So he's saying, all these evil things, let them not be named once among you. Neither filthiness or foolish talking or jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For you know that uh, no homonger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ of our God, all right? So stop doing wrong things. Stop doing what is wrong. Follow what the Bible has said. Also as well, you should not ashamed the name of your Savior. Don't ashamed him. Once you're saved, please stop ashaming God in your things, in your deeds, in the things that you're doing. 2 Timothy 2, 19, 21, the Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you name the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. Stop doing wrong. If, you, if you're called, you're saying, hey, I'm a Christian, depart from iniquity. That's what the Bible is saying. But 
uh, verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If any man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. So the Bible says, yes, God says, even in a house, there is also those utensils, plates and cups and spoons that they are for honor, you know. They're only, we used to see when we were young, it used to be like, uh, you know, when you have visitors, there are special plates that are for visitors, which are for honor. But others we can use any time. We can boil water, we can do what, we can boil eggs, we can, you know, all those kind of things. But if you, if you want to be a person of honor to God, keep yourself pure, do what is right, have a testimony, have a testimony. Yes, there are those utensils which will be used for any other occasion which are despised by anyone even a child can just go and pick and cook using them don't be that kind of person yes they are there yes they will still go to heaven but god wants you to give a testimony all right give a testimony so when you serve jesus you literally show that uh, when you serve and you do what is right you literally show that you love jesus you show that you appreciate what he did for you and also, in heaven, you're going to get rewards, all right? There are rewards. These rewards will be at the judgment seat of Christ. Judgment seat of Christ. This is the judgment for the saints. Maybe mo most people have never known that Christians and their sinners will not be judged the same way. No. For us who are Christians, will have a different judgment. The judgment seat of Christ. But for the sinners, it would be the great white throne judgment. This judgment seat of Christ is a judgment for rewards. All the things that you did, good or bad, you're going to be judged this time. All right? The Bible says, try and do good. Be Show good works. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. You know? It's dead. Yes, it is there, but it's dead. <laughs> you know? It's there, but it's dead. Do something. Do something. That is, try and do good works. Give a testimony of your salvation. You can lose your salvation, but give a good testimony. All right? Let's see. It's Colossians 3.22. Colossians 3.22.25. Servants, obey in all things your masters, according to the flesh, not with the eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of hearts, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. All right. So you shall receive a reward when you do what is right. Verse 25 says, but he that does wrong shall receive for the wrong which he has done. And there is no respect and there is no respect of persons. So God does not say, because this person was archbishop, this and that, he was reverend, this and that, that person was saved for 25 years. Since he did wrong, he's still going to be among us. Uh, those people will be blessed more, who will be rewarded more. No, God says he's not a respecter of any person. If you do wrong, you're going to get no rewards in heaven. All right? So do what is right. Do what is right. Bring people to God. And I'm going to make another video on uh, the different kinds of rewards that you're going to get. Crowns. There are five different crowns which have been mentioned in the Bible. So I'll, I'll speak about that. Crown of righteousness. Uh, different crowns depending on, you know, the crown of uh, if, if you avoid doing what is wrong. If uh, there are crowns for that. If you preach the word of God, there are crowns for that. I'm going to make a video on that. Maybe just uh, stay tuned. So, whatever you plant, you will reap. The Bible says, everything that you plant, you're going to reap. 1 Corinthians 3, 18. Uh, 3 verse 8, sorry. 1 Corinthians 3, 8. The Bible says, Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So, right now, I'm, I'm telling you the word of God. I might have told someone here who is not saved, and then he just hears and says, mm, I don't want to get saved today. I have planted. Someone else will water. Another one will prune. Another one will do this. But now God says, we shall all get different rewards for everything that we do. I may not have 
preached and then somebody heard and got saved right now. But somebody else might preach to him and then he can remember, yeah, I heard that message from a guy called Keith. And I believe I can be able to, you know, I understood someone else was watered. 1 Corinthians 3.14, it says, If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. The Bible talks about rewards. 2 John 1.8, Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. The Bible says, please, just do whatever you can and receive a full reward. Let's also see. Uh, Titus, the book of Titus. Let's see what Titus says. Titus from 3, 3 to 8. Titus 3, 3 to 8. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after, the ki- after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is the faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works, these things are good and profitable unto all men. So God is saying, try as much as you can to maintain the good works, the testimony, the good works, so that you can get rewards. And also God can give you a long life because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And also, once you do that, you can be able to, God will be on your side. He will be happy with you. The Bible says when you live on the flesh, God cannot be pleased. All right. And of course, for those people, this is for people who are saved. But if you're not saved, there's only one way. The Bible says you're only saved by the gospel. So make sure that you're saved. Make sure that you understand the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Let me just write for you here. 1 Corinthians, uh, the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it says how Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again according to the scriptures. The Bible talks about how, how, how that Christ died. Actually, it's only uh, King James Version Bible which has this word which explains how that Christ died. And he did all this for you. All this was done for you. So when you believe what Jesus did for you, as the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, you're going to be saved. Once you believe this, salvation is not by doing anything. It is just by believing. Once you believe that, you're saved. And your life will never be the same again. So I hope you have been able to understand. I hope it was a blessing to you. Uh, Just, you can share to somebody else. You can uh, reach to somebody else. Let them hear, let them understand. And uh, that's the only way you can be able to be saved. So God bless you. Have a great time. See you.